Praise the Lord, church. I'm going to be reading from the book of Isaiah 57, 1. In the NIV version says, The blessed death of the righteous. The righteous perish and no one takes it to heart. The devout men who swept away while there is no considered that the righteous are a guide from the presence of evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace and they find rest laying down in death. The Lord was pressed upon my heart because we're in a very vital situation with people passing away and, and the church coming together and praying. And the Lord pressed upon my heart for that scripture because a lot of us are fighting spiritual battles. But the Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The Bible says, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. There isn't, this is not a physical war. This is a spiritual war. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, the Bible says, but against spiritual wickedness and high places. But this is what my word says. The Lord gave us a promise. He said to Peter, upon this rock I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said, Peter, whatever you bind on earth is bound in the heavens. Whatever you loose on earth, it is loosed in the heavens. You've got the power inside of you, church, to bind and loose any situation that comes against you. No weapon, it says, formed against you shall prosper. I'm telling you, I serve a God. If, if it wasn't for God being in my life, and if it wasn't for God breaking every yoke and breaking every chain off of my life, I came from a life of drugs. I came from a life of addiction. And let me tell you something. I didn't need, I, like I tell you all the time, I say I didn't need AA. I didn't need AAA. I just needed this altar. We serve a God of the living, not the God of the dead. The God that I serve is eternal. And, and I'm telling you, he's as close as the mention of his name. Because if God can save this ex-gangster, God can save anybody in your family. And I just want to, let's, let's pray, church. Let's come together and let's, let's come together in unity in the church right now. Because there's hurting people and there's people that need God. Lord, I pray right now, we pull down all spiritual wickedness, God. We bind all sickness and disease. Lord, your word said by the 39 stripes on your back, I am healed of all my infirmities, of all my iniquities. God, you were bruised. Um, Lord, I just want to thank you. God, we pray for the families that are hurting. God, I pray right now in your name, Father, that God, you can fix all things. And I pray right now, God, for this service as we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and praise. Lord, we thank you for being in our lives and bringing us together in unity in the body. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are excited to be in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night? How many are ready to worship the Lord? Come on. How many are ready to worship the Lord? Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't we just lift him up with the most high praise? Hallelujah. Come on, all across this room. Hallelujah. 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 The one true living God is in this place. The king who seated high upon the throne of glory is in this place. He's in this room. He's in this room. He's in this room. Why don't we just stir up the gifts right now? Hallelujah. And entertain the presence of Almighty God in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The King of Kings is in this building. The Lord of Lords is in this building. And he doesn't want to just be in this building. Oh, no. For he does not dwell in temples made by human hands. Oh, no. But he wants to dwell in this temple. He wants to dwell in each and every one of us in this room. So why don't we just lift up our hands and begin to receive the presence of God in this place tonight. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're here for you, God. We're here for you, God. We're here for you, God. Have your way, Jesus. We are your vessels, God. We are your children, Jesus. We acknowledge your presence in this place tonight. Hallelujah, God. Come on and lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. There's going to come a day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess who Jesus is. There's coming a day when those that do not know will know the God you serve. The God you serve is the true living God. His name is Jesus, and he can do anything. People may not know who he is, but you have the revelation tonight of who he is. Not only do you have the revelation, but you have the experience and the relationship to know that he is exactly who he says he is. He's your provider. He's your way maker. He's your healer. God, he is your everything. Jesus is my everything. And so when I need something, I know who I can call on. I don't have to call on my neighbor. I don't have to call on the one next to me. But I can cry out to Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. Faith. I can cry out to God, my creator, the one who sees my pain, the one who knows my hurt, the one that knows right where I'm at. There's a God that loves me and cares for me, and I can cry out to him. I'm so glad I know his name. 
If you need something tonight, this altar is open. We're going to pray for you in Jesus' name. You're sick in your body. You need a financial miracle. You need depression to leave your mind. You need the devil to leave your thoughts. There is a place at this altar. There's deliverance at this altar. You can come forward right now in Jesus' name, and we're going to pray for you. But when you come, come lifting up your hands. Come expecting. Come knowing that the God in heaven is going to reach down and touch your life. The God in heaven, he's going to step down and he's going to commune with you. He's going to communicate with you. He's going to speak to you. He's going to make a way out of no way. He's going to step into the impossible situation. He's going to give you peace. He's going to restore you. He's going to heal you. God, right now in Jesus' name, Lord God, we pray for every need in this room. God, we pray right now in Jesus' name, God, that you would give strength. God, you would provide understanding and Lord right now Jesus bring us into your presence Lord bring us into your presence God we desire your touch from heaven God we desire a moment with you God we desire this encounter God more than anything else Jesus I need you more than anything else Jesus I need you to step into my life God I need you to step into my situation God it's beyond me I don't have the answers, but I know, I know, I know that you know all things, and you have every answer I seek, and so right now, Jesus, oh God, provide the peace that we need, Lord God, provide the touch that we need, Jesus. God, right now in Jesus' name, God, the battle in our mind, Jesus, bring us deliverance and victory in our mind, and the battlefield we find ourselves on, Jesus, God, right now, make a way out of no way, right now, Jesus, I pray, God, for the deliverance, I pray, mighty God, for the liberty of your spirit, God, I pray for you to touch right now, Jesus, move, Lord, move in this place, Move in this place, Jesus. Oh, I wonder if there's an intercessor in the room. If you could just begin to intercede right now. I wonder if there's an intercessor in this place. You can just find yourself in the presence of Jesus. There are souls that are weighing in the balance. And they need your prayers. They need your prayers. They need your prayers. Right now, in Jesus' name. God, deliver us into your presence. Bring us into your presence, Jesus. Lord, let there be a manifestation of your spirit. Let there be a manifestation of your spirit, Jesus. God, remove my anger, Jesus. Remove my bitterness, mighty God. Oh, Jesus, let me experience a healed heart. Let me experience a healed heart. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus.
Yes, Jesus. There's healing at this altar right now. There's healing at this altar right now. Uh, the waters have been troubled, uh, and the Lord has stepped into this place. Uh, whatever you have a need of, uh, this altar is the healing waters. Uh, this altar is the touch of heaven. Uh, this altar is the encounter that you need. Uh, Almighty God, we thank you. Thank you for this moment. Thank you, Lord, for touching, moving, ministering, healing, Lord, right now, Jesus. The enemy of your soul can mimic the appearance of godliness. The enemy of your soul can try to replicate an encounter with God. But the enemy can only have the form of godliness and not the power. The enemy of your soul cannot possess the power of God's spirit. It is his spirit that does the work. You can dress it up and make it look pretty, but you cannot replicate the presence of Jesus Christ. You cannot replicate the presence of Jesus Christ. And what we have here tonight in this place is an authentic presence of the Lord. And why does the Lord show up? He shows up because we desire Him. Very simply, why He shows up. As we were praying, the Lord ministered and put this into my heart. There's somebody here tonight who you have questioned baptism. You've actually put it off. You've, 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 you've thought about it. You've prayed about it. But you're still unsure. You're not, you're not stepping out yet. You're still timid when it comes to the topic of baptism. Baptism in Jesus' name. And what I feel to tell you tonight that you don't need to ask the question anymore. Should you? The answer is yes, you should. Don't wait until tomorrow. Whoever you are, you've waited long enough. Stop waiting. Tonight, let tonight be your night that you say, okay, God, I'm going to take what I say. And I'm going to put it to action. I'm not only going to tell you I love you, Jesus, but I'm going to demonstrate and show that I love you. And I'm going to submit my life to you, and I'm going to step out into a place where I'm uncomfortable. And it's in that place of being uncomfortable that Jesus can move and minister. And everything you've been praying about, the reason why your prayers have not been answered is because you're still comfortable right where you are. But as soon as you get uncomfortable, God is going to begin to respond. And the things that were once, I feel this right now, the, ones that were, the things that were once hidden from you, now you will see clearly. Things that you looked dimly at, God is going to shine a light on. And you will see as God sees your situation and what it is you're facing and what it is you're going through. Amen. Anybody thankful to be in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night? 
I'm so thankful for midweek, our midweek service. It's always so special. The way the Lord moves in this place is always so special every Wednesday. Tonight's going to be a special night, but before we get into the remainder of the service, I just want to welcome all of our guests and visitors here tonight. Thank you so much for being here. We're so thankful that you decided to join us. Amen. We know that you could be anywhere tonight, but we're just happy you decided to be here with us. And so thank you so much. And it's our hope and prayer that you feel the love of God, but you also feel the love of this family because this is not just a church. It's not a social club. It's not a hangout. This is a family called the body of Christ. And so thank you so much for joining us. And we're going to enter into an opportunity to sow and give into God's kingdom this evening. And uh, I know that God's been ministering. God's been moving, been moving upon you. And uh, it's just as we walk with the Lord, he always takes care of us. He always takes care of us. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. But God always always, always takes care of us. I'm encouraged by His Word because His Word says that He's never seen the righteous forsaken nor His seed begging for bread. I'm encouraged because I know that my righteousness is a filthy rags, but if I can obtain His righteousness, then I can be the one. I can be a part of the one that is never forsaken, nor am I ever begging but God will supply every need according to His riches and glory, according to His perfect will. God's going to take care of us. Amen. Let's all stand. We're going to pray for the offering. Pray that God bless it and use it for its intended purpose. Pray that God bless you. Pray that the Lord continue to move in your life, move in your finance. You know, if you're struggling financially, it's because of the one managing your finance. It's a trick question. I mean, really, it's actually a trick statement because the best manager of our finance is our Heavenly Father. So we just need to trust Him and let Him manage it for us. Trust Him. Follow His leading, guiding hand. And I know the Lord is going to lead us into all areas and all paths according to His perfect will. Let's pray. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank You for this opportunity to come into this house of worship. God, we're so humbled by your presence that's already here, Jesus. And we're just, we're, we're blessed, mighty God. We're so blessed by you. And Lord, I pray, Jesus, that the increase that you've given us, Lord, we're able to sow it back into your kingdom. God, that you can continue to sow increase into our lives, Jesus. Lord, I pray, God, that you allow us to enjoy, enjoy sowing into your kingdom, God. It's my greatest joy, mighty God, to bless you. Because, God, I know as I bless you, others are being blessed. God, as I bless you, God, I know your kingdom is is prospering and growing. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to sow into your kingdom. And I pray blessings upon every individual in this room. Move upon our hearts, God. And I pray, Lord, for us to be able to respond. Give us the strength to respond to the leading of your spirit tonight. Bless us, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. Bless this offering. Use it for its intended purpose. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen. Before you're seated, find somebody around you. Share the love of the Lord with them. Tell them you love them. Tell them te amo mucho. Tell them mahal kita. Amen. Tell them good old I love you. English works too. I love you. going to remind us of a couple things coming up here on our calendar uh, and and events approaching. Um, Brother Luis, it's good to have you home. I missed you. I'm glad you're home. Te amo mucho, hermano. Amen. And so um, wasn't Easter just incredible? Easter was amazing to to just the the production that this, this church and the team put on was beautiful. You know, I looked over and I was just thinking, man, everything I'm hearing is 100% Word of God. I'm hearing Word of God. I'm hearing the biblical narrative, and that biblical narrative is coming to life right before me. Absolutely powerful, incredible. 
I'm so excited for what God did for us this last Easter. I'm excited for what God's going to continue to do as we move forward. Uh, we're excited June 1st. You can go ahead and mark your calendar for June 1st. We're planning to do an outdoor crusade in the city of Wilmington. All right, that's going to be an outdoor crusade in the city of Wilmington on June 1st, Saturday. And uh, we all need to do our part and show up. And the more of God's presence is there, then he's going to move and deliver people. And God's presence is inside each of us. So we all need to be there. Mark our calendars, June 1st. Also, ladies' devotion. All the ladies, remember, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., devotion in the fellowship hall. And then tonight after service, all right, tonight after service, we have some barbecue chicken that's available. It's going to be $5 per plate tonight, okay? And this is going straight towards our kingdom kids. It's going straight into our children's ministry. That's going to be tonight after service. This is going to help our kids go to summer camp. And that's going to be $5 tonight after service. So I hope you came hungry so you can eat dinner after service. And also coming up April 4th through 6th this week in San Diego is the National Hyphen Conference. And it starts tomorrow night. All right. So if you have any questions, please see Sister Jenny. She's got all the details. And if you want to go and you haven't signed up yet, please talk to her tonight. Maybe there's still room. Maybe there's still room if you want to go. You will be blessed. And that is National Hyphen Conference, all right? That means it is for the whole U.S., okay? The whole U.S. Is, it has a special hyphen conference coming to San Diego. And I know if you go, you'll be blessed. Coming up on Friday, April 12th, is Men's Devotion at 730 in the Fellowship Hall. All the men said amen. 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 So if you said amen, you are a man and you need to be there, all right? So you need to be there on April, that was very corny, that was a dad joke, but it's okay. Okay, you need to be there April 12th at 7.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. And then also coming up April 21st, mark your calendar, this is a big date, okay, big date, April 21st, because we're going to have our friend day, our annual friend day, and we're also going to do cardboard testimony that Sunday, so you want to be inviting people, and we're going to give away two Apple Watches this year, one to a first-time guest, and the second one to whoever brings the most people. All right, so if you bring the most, there's going to be an Apple Watch there with your name on it. All right, I'm just saying. We're not going to engrave it. You can do that, all right? But there will be an Apple Watch for whoever brings the most guests. And then I'm excited coming up in May, all the men. It's our annual men's retreat, May 17th through the 19th at Lawler Alpine Cabin. And it's going to be $200 per person. Okay, $200 per person. Please see Brother Bill Dolly for more information. And men, it's 100 There's a typo. Very, I was like, man, we saw major inflation this year. But praise God, we, we've just been blessed. Praise God. It's not 200 it's 100 right? Praise God. Inflation in God's kingdom is much less than inflation in man's kingdom. So thank you, Brother Bill, for clarifying. It's $100, men. Now you can sigh relief. Ah. Uh, Right, $100 to go to men's retreat, you want to go, all right? You want to be there. If you've never been before, you owe it to yourself to go to men's retreat May 17th through the 19th, all right? May 17th through the 19th, and uh, all of our men need to be present. You know, our men need to be fellowshipping together. Our men need to be connecting together. Our ladies do that quite often, but men, we can do a better job of it, all right? Men, we can do a better job, so... And I know it's kind of like, oh, but we got all kinds of things to do. We do, but we can make time for ourselves to grow together in our relationship with each other and in Christ. So let's make it a point to be there May 17th to the 19th, and we're going to have a great time at men's retreat. Amen. Tonight, I want to hurry up and get out of the way here. Uh, my wife and I, for the next uh, couple Wednesdays, we've been praying about it and, and finding the, the mind of the Lord in terms of our Wednesday night services and so for the next couple of weeks here, her and I are going to be alternating, okay? She's going to come speak, and then I'll take a week, she'll take a week, and then uh, we will come together for a, a service together uh, in the next couple of weeks. And so I just feel the Lord is doing something. And there are certain things that God is at work in, and sometimes it, it takes somebody else besides me saying something. And it's Sister May that's there praying for you. She's got the heartbeat. We're joining together in this. If you look at this church as a pastorship of one, you've got a big misunderstanding. This is a partnership. 
I could not do this without my wife. She is a blessing. She's a tremendous asset. And so I want her to come tonight. Sister May, would you please come? We love you. We're so thankful for you. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord, everyone. I love you all. <laughs> Can we all just praise him right now? Jesus, we praise you. Thank you, Lord. Let's all stand and let's continue to worship him right now in this atmosphere. Come on and lift up your hands and just thank him for his presence, for his peace in this room. God, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've done, what you continue to do, Lord. Jesus, we can't make it without you. Jesus, you're faithful. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Genesis 11, verses 1 to 9. Genesis 11, verses 1 to 9 says, Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. <coughs> then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They have brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. So I'm going to be speaking with this message entitled, With One Accord. Amen. One more time, let's pray. Lift up his name right now, Jesus. We need you tonight. God, I pray that you will have your way in this place, Jesus. I pray for unity right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Continue to strengthen each and every one of us here tonight, Lord. We need you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Again, I, we want to personally want to thank all our team from our Easter Sunday. It takes a whole team to make it happen. Amen. The media team, the uh, music team, special thank you to Sister Sambo because these past few weeks I've been really sick. <laughs> and she's been helping me so much, teaching all the parts and getting everybody together, getting all the band together. And um, also the script writers, the crew members, uh, Sister Kim Hernandez for doing the costumes and helping us with our outfits, <laughs> our Bible Day outfits. <laughs> you know, it's so amazing. After the production, Sister Kim talked to me and said, I feel so fulfilled. It's just amazing just how many people are here and so many people are blessed. And that's how it is when you work for the kingdom of God, there's fulfillment. And there's, it's just, I don't know, it's unexplainable. It's that joy that you, that you feel, right? And um, also, Brother John Ayoki, our director. He's our director, slash our youth pastor, slash 
assistant pastor slash our grill master. <laughs> he does it all. He does it all. And it's just amazing to watch Brother John just be available in just every area that we need him. He's not going to be like, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. He's always available, just flexible and available. And Sister Kat Berry and the Kingdom Kids staff for putting together all of the events, the activities for all the kids after, after service. It was just an incredible day. Amen. It was raining, but then it stopped raining, and we all had a great time. But, you know, it takes a team to get the job done. God moves in a, such a special way when we are all unified, amen? One mind and one spirit, because there is power in unity. And when we get a hold of God's vision, and we all work together as a body of Christ, something happens so powerful, something so special can happen. Because when we're doing our part, God uses us for his purpose. Amen? And we are all a part of the body of Christ, and we need to fulfill um, God's purpose. And great things happen. 1 Corinthians 1.10, it says, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Acts 4.32 says, Now the multitude of those who believe were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And then in Philippians 2, verses 2, it says, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. So it is the will of God for his people to be of one mind and one accord to fulfill his purpose. Do you believe that today? And so the thing is, we need to ask ourselves, what, what's my purpose? Why am I here? Why are you here? Do you know why you're here? What is God's purpose for our lives? It's to glorify him. I want to glorify the Lord in everything that I do. That's our purpose, is to glorify God. Amen. And so we read a couple of minutes ago the Tower of Babel story. It's a Sunday school story. I love that story. And the people were unified. They had an idea. They said, let's, let's build something big. Okay? They have a great idea, but they have a wrong motives. Okay? Something got perverted. So Genesis 11, verse 4, we're going to go back. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. That was their motive. Let's make a, a name for ourselves. I, we want to be famous. We want to win. <laughs> I don't know. Something. They have that motive of, I want to do something great, but I'm not going to involve God in it. That's just, it's me. It's, let us make a name for ourselves. And you know, it's not bad to have ambitions. How many of you have ambitions? Dreams and ambitions. You know what my dream is? Is to eat whatever I want and not gain weight. <laughs> I'm just joking. It's impossible. But hey, we all have desires. My, maybe one of these days I'll pray that prayer and it'll happen. But we all have desires and ambitions. It's not necessarily bad to have ambitions. Ambition is a strong desire to achieve something. But here's the thing. There's two kinds of ambition, okay? There's a godly ambition, and there's selfish ambition. Philippians 2, verses 3 to 4 says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Godly ambition is when you strive to serve others rather than to serve yourself first. Okay, now selfish ambition is fulfilling your dreams and desires and doesn't include God 
It's just about me. What's going to be good for me? I don't care about other people, what they think, but I just want whatever's good for me. So they said, let us make a name for ourselves. And that statement right there tells me it's not to glorify God. It's to glorify self. And whenever we're trying to glorify self, that is called pride. Amen? Pride. So this is what pride looks like in Psalms 10, verses 4 to 7. This is what pride looks like. The wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. His ways are always prospering. Your judgments are far above, out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he sneers at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adversity. His mouth, here's the thing, key, key thing his, his mouth, say his mouth, is full of cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue is trouble and iniquity. That's when you know. That's the first definition. When someone is prideful, their mouth, their tongue, full of cursing. What does that mean? Does that mean they're saying bad words all the time? No. When you curse somebody, it's expression of anger and dissatisfaction. I don't like them. I don't, I don't know about this. That is cursing. Okay? Cursing someone is to express anger and hostility. When you see someone whose mouth is full of hostility and anger and they tear people down, that's pride. There's pride in them, okay? Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Proverbs 6, verses 16 to 19 says, these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. One way to really destroy what the Lord is doing in his kingdom is to sow discord. Well, I'm just stating my opinion. That's just my opinion. Okay, this is what you need to ask yourself if you have opinions. Ready? Ask yourself, is it necessary? Is your opinions necessary? Is it going to help someone? Does it glorify God? Your opinions, does it glorify God? Or this one right here. You say your opinions. Does it tear people down or does it edify? If it doesn't, don't say anything. Pray. You got to pray. I need prayer right now because this is not my style of teaching. But there's something in me that's stirring up these past few weeks. And I've been in warfare, church. And this needs to let out. And I need to declare this in the name of Jesus. The enemy is not going to win. I am sick and tired of the enemy bullying his people. Okay? You still love me? <laughs> All right. Because I'm not okay with that. I am not okay with the enemy. It's hostility and meanness. And we got to fix it right here, family. In the name of Jesus. So is it necessary? Are your opinions helping? If it's not, in the name of Jesus, rebuke yourself. Or I'll rebuke you. Jesus' name. <laughs> If you cannot tell the person in, in person, in front of them, your opinions, then don't say it. If you're honest and you're blunt, and oh, you know what, I'll tell Sister May, I'll tell, I'll tell Jenny, then okay, you can tell other people, okay? But if you can't tell them, that means you're too afraid because there's so much cursing, there's so much anger, you can't even tell it to their face. There's fakeness in that. That's fake. And we, we need to be authentic in the body of Christ. We need to build each other up. You can't tell them in their face, don't say it. But it all starts with a conversation. It starts with a 
maybe an innocent conversation. And after that conversation, you want to just share your thoughts and your opinions. And the next thing you know, you're sowing discord. And if you're participating in that conversation and you're not saying anything, you're still sowing discord. Okay? Tower, the Tower of Babel people, it started with an idea. I'm sure there's a conversation. They were unified but had the wrong motives because they had pride. It's all, it's all about self. It's about me, not about others, not about Jesus. It's about me. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Family, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. We need to pray for godly wisdom. We need to pray for discernment that you know it's the devil. And I know this is God's voice. No matter how good it sounds, you know, okay, no, something ain't right. That is not of God. There's no peace in my spirit. It doesn't matter if they look good and they say the good things to you, but in your spirit it's saying something is perverted. We need to pray for wisdom, family, godly wisdom that we can tell when it's the enemy speaking to you, your flesh, or Jesus. We, can, we need to tell the difference. We, we need to have that godly wisdom. Because the enemy can make it sound like a good idea. Or your flesh can make it, oh, it's a great idea. But not a God idea. And next thing you know, it's perverted. And you're in that wrong path. And you're full of pride and bitterness and anger and hostility. If somebody comes to you, come. Come over to my house. I invite you. And it's like great conversation. Then they start talking about people. They start talking about pastor. They start talking about the church. Leave. You don't need to be participating in that demonic function. That's demonic right there. In Jesus' name. <laughs> In Jesus' name. I rebuke the enemy. I rebuke the lies. Of, tonight, we're going to shut the lies of the enemy, family. That's what we're going to do tonight. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. All it needs is just a little bit. If you're, if you're already emotionally all over the place and you're vulnerable, that's all the devil needs. If you're offended just for a little bit, that's what the devil, perfect timing. I can enter it. Perfect. That's my cue. Yes. Do not give the devil foothold. Always put on the armor of God. And the only way that we can have the right discernment, the godly discernment, is to walk in the spirit. Not in your flesh, not in your emotions. Walk in the spirit. Resist the urge to be offended. Take it to Jesus. Take it to Jesus. Don't be trying to find someone else and like, hey, you know what? Did you know this happened to me? I can't believe that. I can't. They're Christian, right? I thought, mm -mm. pray. Take it to Jesus. He's going to give you peace. He's going to help you. He will heal your hurt. But take it to him. Pray. You know what? Pray first. And if you really can't handle it, then talk to someone who's accountable, who, who knows how to pray. Because if you go to somebody who does not pray, and they're full of bitterness and anger, it's not going to help you. So find somebody that knows how to pray and that loves you and knows how to tell you the truth, and, he'll, and they'll help you get back on track. Don't find somebody who's just like you, broken, emotionally offended. Don't, don't group yourselves with haters because you're going to end up being more and more bitter and you're not going to heal. You are not going to heal. We need healing. Amen. We want healing. And so we need to surround ourselves with people that are healed and they know how to pray. Surround yourselves with elders. They have a wisdom. 
I love it. Most of my friends are elders. They, they, they are. I have a lot of friends that are not my age. They're in their 70s. <laughs> Brother Rao and I are BFFs. <laughs> okay? But I love my elders. There's so much wisdom. So much wisdom. Resist the urge for any unwholesome talk. That's called self-control. Self-control. Resist the flesh. Resist the enemy. James 4, verses 6 to 7 says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, it says, therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit to God first. If you're not submitted, you cannot have the ability to resist the devil. You have to be submitted. Now, if you're sowing discord, you are not submitted. If you're having unwholesome talk, you are not submitted. You cannot resist the devil. Let's talk about having a critical spirit. People who have a critical spirit are only concerned with what is wrong. They're a fault finder. Whatever you can see that's wrong. I don't like the song. Uh, they, they should be, they, they need to sing these types of music. I hate that, whatever song they're doing. I don't like the way pastor preaches. I'm not a big fan. I don't like how they did the Harvest Fest. I don't like that. Let's just, just think about that for a minute. How we all have these tendencies. Are you still okay, <laughs> family? <laughs> I can see faces like this. <laughs> but we don't only see, this is the mama side right here. <laughs> That's a side. Of, <laughs> well, critical spirit. All you want to see is what's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. I don't like it. I don't like how they did that. And we all have these tendencies, right? Fault finder, whatever we can find something that's wrong. And if it's left unchecked, this is what's going to happen. It's going to prevent you from seeing the goodness of God and valuing the people of God, valuing your relationship with God, because all you see is what's wrong. There's no more testimony. There's no more, what, look what the Lord has done. No, because all you see is bad. All you see is the, the bad stuff. So how can we get rid of the critical spirit? So here's the thing. A critical person, most of the time, is fleshy. They fleshy. That's a critical spirit right there. We need to ask God, this is, we need help, God. We need to ask God to open our spiritual eyes because our flesh selves don't, we don't see the good in anything. So open up the spiritual eyes. God, I pray that you'll open up my spiritual eyes. I don't want to see how I see it. I want to see how you see it. Help me value others the way you value them. Help me to love others the way you love them. Give me the ability to love others, to see others the way you love them. And here's the thing, if you have a critical spirit, you have to accept God's love for you, God's grace, his mercy. Because if you're able to accept it and value it, then you're able to extend grace and mercy. Extend mercy and grace to others, just like how God extends his mercy and love towards you. Hallelujah. Can we just praise him right now, Lord? Help us. Help us to see how you see others, Lord. Jesus, help us, mighty God, to not be critical. And judgmental, Lord. Help us accept your love, Lord, so that we can love others the way you love them, Lord. 
verses 15 to 18 it says beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravenous wolves you will know them here's how you're going to know them you will know them by their fruits do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles even so every good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. You will know them by their fruit. And if you are walking in the spirit, you will know them. Does not matter how they, they camouflage, you know, the, the devil can do that. You will know by them by their fruit. Galatians 5 verses 16 to 24 says, I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. It's fruit of the Spirit. Let us strive to be with one accord, fulfilling his purpose for his kingdom. One of the greatest story in the Bible is found in Acts 2. Verses 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house with, where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divi divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues tongues as the spirit gave them utterance there is power when we all come together in unity fulfilling God's purpose for our lives you know what Satan hates the idea that the family of God is growing he just wants us to stay like this stay the same forever but once we start growing and we have more and more revelation he's gonna sow discord the devil will do everything he can to destroy unity. And this is why tonight we're not going to allow the enemy to destroy what the Lord has built. Tonight, I'm, I'm done, but I want our elders to come up here. I've got oils right there. Babe, next to you, these are oils. Um, if it's not enough for everybody, that's okay, we can share. And um, I do this often in our ladies' 
Thursday morning devotions. A couple times a year we do this. I call it clean house. And what we do is we anoint everything. We anoint the pews. We anoint the pulpit. We anoint the instruments. We anoint the media room. We anoint the doors. And we're just going to anoint this, this house right here. We're cleaning house. We're driving the spirits away. You're not welcome here, devil. That's what we're going to do tonight. I know this is something that you're probably not used to, and you're probably looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> but I truly believe that we need this as a family. We need to pray together with one purpose. I have been in spiritual attack for a couple months. And I was weighed down so heavy in my spirit. I was hurt. I didn't know if I should continue on serving the Lord. I was attacked. And I just want to be honest with you all. I was hurting. And if I'm getting attacked, I know that you all too have been attacked. But we can all make this together because we're going to pray together. And I know that God has a plan. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand just stand Isaiah 54 17 says no weapon for against you shall prosper and every tongue which rises against you with judgment you shall condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Now can we all stand? And I'm going to ask the elders to come up here. And we're going to pray for you. And I ask you right now, we're going to pray. We're going to pray for this whole church. We're going to pray with one another. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Break every shade, break every 
there's an army. There's an army. There's an army. Rising up. Rising up. There's an army. There's an army. Rising up. There's an army. Rising up.
The Lord spoke to Peter and said, Peter, be cautious, be mindful for the enemy, the enemy of your soul, the devil. He wants to sift you as wheat. He wants to eliminate you. He wants to remove you from what God is wanting to do in you and through you. Family, it's not a building that Satan's trying to conquer. Hear me. It's not even a region he's trying to conquer. It's not a piece of land he's trying to conquer. It's people he wants to conquer. It's your mind he wants to conquer. It's your thoughts he wants to conquer. It's your spirit he wants to conquer. Satan desires to destroy every single one of you in this room, and he will use any tactic possible to do it. When Sister May was speaking, I just felt the Lord impress this upon my spirit, that God is infallible. God is without error. God is perfect. So Satan can't point out the faults of God and get you to change your mind about God. But what he can do is he can find somebody that has errors and somebody that has faults and somebody that's tangible. And he can point to that person and say, look at their errors, look at their faults. Because he can't find fault with God, but he's going to find, he's going to let you find fault with your brother and your sister and the one sitting next to you. He's going to let you find fault with the leaders of this church. Why? Because he wants your soul more than anything. And he's going to work overtime to conquer your mind. And so here's what we're going to do before we leave this place. Does everybody have your oil? Does everybody have your oil? Okay, if you, if you need oil, you need to come find me right now at this, at this front if you need oil. Okay? You need, you need oil? Brother, Brother Max, do we still have oil? Let's bring that box over here. Just go ahead and bring that box. If you need oil, you need to come to the front. Okay? If you did not get oil, you need to come get oil. All right? We're going to try to get everybody to get some oil as best we can. Here's why you need your oil. Now, the Bible says that they called for the elders to anoint. So Sister May called for the elders and the elders walked around this room and anointed you. You see, any time that anybody was moving forward into their God purpose, God had them anointed. God anointed them. When we anoint, this is not just oil. It's not, it's not holy oil. No, but what we are doing is we are putting forth a physical action in response and obedience to God's Word. And when we obey God's Word, God fulfills His Word. So you need deliverance? We're going to anoint. We need freedom in our mind? We're going to anoint. We need peace of God, we're going to anoint. We need healing, we're going to anoint. But here's what we're going to do. Sister May, if you can please join me. Here's what we're going to do. Before we leave this room, I want you to find somebody around you, next to you. We are going to be anointing each other tonight. We're going to be anointing each other tonight. Why? Because our minds are under attack. Our hearts are under attack. Satan desires your mind and your thoughts. And I want my mind covered. I want my thoughts covered. I want 
God to reach into my life and protect every piece of me because there's coming a time when Satan's going to do his best more than he's even doing right now to destroy us. And so if you can find somebody right now to pray with, that's why I've called for my wife to come here. We're going to anoint each other and we're going to pray. We're going to pray a covering over each other. We're going to pray that Satan cannot have this family. We're going to pray that the voice of the enemy be silenced in this room. The voice of lies be silenced and the wolves be removed from this flock in Jesus' name that the Lord would be free to move in us. And I'm not going to be a tool of the enemy, but I'm going to be a tool for Jesus Christ. I'm going to be a tool of righteousness. I'm going to be a vessel of honor and not dishonor. And so if you can right now, take that anointing oil and begin to pray in Jesus' name. Right now, anoint each other and pray in Jesus' name.